Intraoperative perforation is a major adverse event of endoscopic submucosal dissection. Dissection from a distant position or an adversarial angle of the knife to the muscle layer increases the risk of perforation. The multi-bending endoscope has two bends at its tip. This makes it easier to approach the area to be resected and adjust the angle between the knife and the muscle layer to avoid perforation. Here we present two cases to highlight the use of the multi-bending endoscope. First, we show the movement of different sections of the multi-bending endoscope. The first bending section of the multi-bending endoscope angulates upwards. Next, we show how the second bending section angulates upwards. Finally, we show how the second bending section angulates downwards. Case 1. A 71-year-old man with early gastric cancer, a type O2C lesion at the lesser curvature of the lower body of the stomach. Initially, we used a conventional endoscope and made an approximate semicircular cut on the distal side. After that, we attempted dissection. However, the knife was at an adversarial angle to the muscle layer after approaching the site. This presented a high risk for muscle layer damage. Therefore, we modified our approach, added an incision on the proximal side, and proceeded with dissection in the forward direction. As dissection progressed, it became increasingly difficult to approach the site, and paradoxical movement occurred. By using the multi-bending endoscope, we were able to easily approach the dissection site and suitably orient the knife so that it was nearly parallel to the muscle layer. Thereafter, we were able to insert the endoscope between the mucosa and the muscle layer, enabling traction through the use of a hood. Dissection proceeded with the knife parallel to the muscle layer throughout the entire procedure. we were able to complete end-block resection without perforation. Case 2. A type O2C lesion at the anterior to posterior wall of the upper body of the stomach. The incision on the fundus, which was the most difficult to access, was made possible by the multi-bend functionality of the endoscope, which enabled us to efficiently approach and treat the site. The dissection of the proximal side was proceeded in the forward direction. We extended the knife out of the right channel of the endoscope when performing incisions towards the left. On the other hand, when performing incisions towards the right, we found that extending the knife out of the left channel of the endoscope expanded our visual field considerably. It improved our ability to visually distinguish blood vessels in the movement path of the endoscope and the boundaries of the submucosal and muscle layers. Despite many large blood vessels at the lesion site, our close approach to the site enabled us to visually confirm their presence and use hemostatic forceps to carry out preventive coagulation and avoid coagulation of the muscle layer with the hemostatic forceps. While operating in the inverted position, we maintained an upward angle in the second bend of the endoscope. By making small adjustments to the angle, we were able to approach the resection site and maintain a parallel angle between the knife and muscle layer during the operation. Summary of two cases. By using the first and the second bending sections of a multi-bending endoscope, the areas to be resected can be approached easily. By adjusting the angle of both the first and second bending sections of the endoscope, the knife can be maintained parallel to the muscle layer when approaching the submucosa. The use of a multi-bending endoscope will enable safer and faster treatment of the patients.